Assalamualaikum everybody. Good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the latest headlines. With just four days to go of campaigning for the Delhi polls, electioneering touches a feverish pitch. Barbs and counterattacks between party bigwigs, the highlight of canvassing. Center to set up a special investigation team to reinvestigate 1984 anti-Sikh riot cases closed by the police. Congress calls it a political gimmick. Shushma Swaraj to attend Russia-India-China trilateral meet in Beijing today. Her China trip sets the stage for Prime Minister Modi's visit to take place in May. And Novak Djokovic wins his fifth Australian Open title, beats Murray in the men's singles final. Leander Pace bags his 15th Grand Slam title by winning the mixed doubles with Martina Hingis. Well, there's just four days to go of campaigning for the Delhi elections and candidates and parties are pulling out all stops to win over the water. The weekend was full of barbs and counter-attacks. It's said to be a neck-and-neck -neck race and the desperation shows. Here's a report. In the high-stakes campaign for the Delhi Assembly elections, all the three parties, the BJP, the Ahmadmi Party and the Congress, unleashed their top leaders on Sunday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Arvind Kejriwal and Sonia Gandhi combined to race the poll pitch across the city. Addressing a gathering in West Delhi's Dwarka area, Modi said he was now a resident of Delhi and intended to keep all his promises to the city's voters. Delhi मुझे सात लोकसभा की सीटें दे और पूर्ण बहुमत की दिल्ली में सरकार बनाने के लिए अवसर दे इससे बड़ी कोई बात नहीं होती है भाई आपने मुझे वो दिया है अब मुझे ब्याज समेत उसे लौटाना है विकास करके लौटाना है The BJP's chief ministerial candidate Kiran Bedi exhorted voters to help her translate Modi's dreams into a reality. Hamari sari sarkar, sare mantri log aap se jude rahenge, aapke hamare party ke leadership aap se jude rahenge, hamare tamam karyakarta aap se jude rahenge taaki aapke vichar sunte rahe, ham aapko wo sarkar de jo aapko chahiye. ये सरकार आपकी है ये सरकार सबकी है ये सबकी सरकार है जो हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी के सपने साकार करने वाली है दिल्ली को वर्ल्ड क्लास सिटी बनाने वाली है आम आदमी पार्टी लीडर अरविंद केजरीवाल टुक द बीजेपी टू टास्क ओवर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी रेट्स एंड राइजिंग प्राइसेस अमंग अदर इश्यूज इन्होंने नारा दिया था ना बहुत हुई महंगाई की मार अब की बार मोदी सरकार मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूं महंगाई कम हो गई क्या उल्टे महंगाई बढ़ गई है भाई साहब इन्होंने दूध के दाम बढ़ा दिए सब्जियों के दाम बढ़ा दिए फलों के दाम बढ़ा दिए दालों के दाम बढ़ा दिए रेल के किराए बढ़ा दिए सिलेंडर के दाम बढ़ा दिए बिजली के दाम बढ़ा दिए पानी के दाम बढ़ा दिए Congress President Sonia Gandhi targeted both the BJP and the Aam Aadmi Party in her speech. She listed the party's achievements while charging her rivals of making false promises to the people. Jinko humne samartan diya, we did mahine bhi sarkar nahi chala paaye, zimmedari chhod kar chale gaye. Fir aaye, Bhajpa sarkar, wo bhi chunab karane ki jagha. अपनी जिम्मेदारी निभाने के बजाय चुनाव टालती रही और दिल्ली को अपने हाल पर छोड़ दिया इलेक्शन फॉर द सेवेंटी मेंबर डेली असेंबली विल बी हेल्ड इन अ सिंगल फेज ऑन सेवेंथ ऑफ फेब विद बेरी सिक्स डेज टू गो द सिटी सॉ ओवर सेवेंटी रैलीज ऑन संडे ऑल पार्टीज हैव प्रेस्ड इन देयर हैवी वेट्स The BJP is relying on Modi's star power to keep its winning streak intact. Making what was his second campaign speech in Delhi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi targeted not only Aam Aadmi Party but also 10 years of UPA government. In highlighting the failures of UPA government, Prime Minister also focused on his own achievement and also sought support for his national agenda. With video journalist Saroj and my colleague Pranav Goswami, Anudivan for Rajya Sabha TV. 
Moving on now, the centre is likely to order a fresh probe in the 1984 uh, Sikh riots cases. Sources say that uh, the committee headed by former Supreme Court Judge Justice G.P. Mathur submitted its report to the Home Minister Rajnath Singh last week. An official announcement is likely soon after the Delhi polls. The move is seen by the Congress as little more than an election ploy. Here's more. 30 years after the anti-Sikh riots in Delhi, the centre is likely to order a fresh probe. It has reportedly decided to set up an SIT to probe cases which were closed by the police and did not reach courts. A panel constituted by the government under Justice G.P. Mathur submitted its report saying there are 225 such cases which need a relook. In its report, the committee has said that in many cases crucial evidence were overlooked and there should be a fresh probe. A delegation of Shiromani Akali the leaders met Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Sunday seeking justice for the right victims. सूत्रों से हमें पता लगा कि उन्होंने एसआईटी के गठन की रिकमेंडेशंस दी हैं और हमने माननीय होम मिनिस्टर को कहा है कि अकाली दल और सिख कम्युनिटी पिछले 31 साल हो गए हैं इंसाफ के लिए लड़ रहे हैं समय आ गया है कि जो रिकमेंडेशंस उन्होंने दी हैं उसको लागू किया जाए उन्होंने क्योंकि इस वक्त इलेक्शन का दौर है वो कह रहे मैं इस पे कुछ कह नहीं सकता लेकिन जो जस्टिस होगा वो मैं जरूर करूंगा ये एक इंटरनेशनल मुद्दा है और यहाँ पे हार्ड दी किसी को सजा हुई है दिल्ली दिल्ली में तीन हजार सिखों का कत्ल हुआ मर किसी को सजा नहीं हुई केस को दी बंद कर दिए गए उनको रीओपन करके उनको रीइन्वेस्टिगेट करना ये तो बहुत ही जरूरी है दो द होम मिनिस्ट्री डिनाइड द रिपोर्ट्स कांग्रेस इस क्राइंग फाउल ओवर द टाइमिंग ऑफ द इनफॉरमेशन हावेवर बीजेपी डिसमिस्ड कांग्रेस इस एलिगेशन दैट द मूव इज एन अटेम्प्ट टू वो वोटर्स अहेड ऑफ द दिल्ली असेंबली पोल्स सुना है रीओपन की है तो करने जा रहे हैं तो हमें अच्छा लगा ठीक है जी और जो सरकार इलेक्शन होते हैं तो सब कुछ करने लग जाती है उसके बाद फिर चुप हो जाते हैं जी बस आगे पीछे तो कोई पूछता नहीं है कमिंग एज इट डज ऑन द हील्स ऑफ फाइव फाइव और सिक्स डेज प्रायर टू डेली इलेक्शन वॉज मिस्टर मोदी एंड बीजेपी स्लीपिंग फॉर नाइन मंथ वेन देवर इन पावर इन सेंटर एज ऑल्सो इन डेली इज इट ओनली एन इलेक्टोरल प्लॉय Is it only a gimmick that Mr. Modi takes out of his hat to woo voters? I think if this is so, then it is deprecable. Now, अभी इसके बारे में हमको ये ज्ञान नहीं है क्योंकि वो चर्चा करना पड़ेगा मंत्रालय में अभी चर्चा में नहीं आया. नहीं वो किसी भी चीज को चुनाव के दृष्टि से जोड़ के नहीं देखना चाहिए. The families of the victims have alleged that Delhi police ignored evidence and witness accounts under political pressure and closed these cases. Home Minister Rajnath Singh had recently described the rise as genocide and assured the victims that the government will bring the culprits to justice. According to sources, some of the cases that are likely to be reinvestigated involve Congress leaders Sajjan Kumar and Jagdish Titler. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. So we got now H1N1 swine flu is showing signs of taking on threatening dimensions in many parts of the country. Over 100 cases reported in Rajasthan alone. Former Chief Minister Ashok Gelot himself tested positive for the virus on Sunday. Gelot blamed the Vasundra Raja government in the state for not doing enough against the illness. 30 people died of swine flu in Rajasthan last month. A special control room has been set up elsewhere. Uh, 39 fresh cases were reported last month in Gujarat. 19 new cases were reported in Lucknow. A casualty has been reported in Telangana as well. And let's take a look now at some news making events lined up for the day today in our special section, The Day Ahead. The BJP is likely to release its vision document today for the upcoming Delhi polls. The document will feature a roadmap for the development and welfare of the people of Delhi. Reports suggest that the party decided to release a vision document instead of a full-fledged manifesto due to indecision over promising complete statehood to the national capital. The party leadership is said to be divided over the issue. Several union ministers including Home Minister Rajnath Singh, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaiya Naidu and HRD Minister Switi Irani will raise the poll pitch in different constitu constituencies of Delhi. Aap convener Arvind Kejriwal will hold a number of public meetings in West Delhi while BJP's chief ministerial candidate will campaign in her constituency. It's the 10th anniversary of the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. The program was launched in 2006 in Andhra Pradesh. Union Minister for Rural Development Virendra Singh will preside over celebrations at Vigyan Bhavan. He will also present the Mandrega Awards on the occasion. 
Several union ministers and rural development ministers from the states are to participate in the function. The 29th edition of the Suraj Kund International Crafts Mela will be thrown open to the general public today. This time around, uh, the Mela grounds have been divided into five zones themed around the five seasons. 18 countries are participating in the fair this year with Lebanon as uh, the partner nation. The fair continues till the 15th of the month. The Mela was inaugurated by Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar and his Chhattisgarh counterpart Raman Singh on Sunday. Well, we slip into a short break right now. Outrage in Japan on the brutal beheading of its journalists by the Islamic State. Silent vigils held around the country. That and other world stories coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. dating back centuries, a cultural heritage that inspires and warms at once, magic that awes, Rajya Sabha television brings you events that embrace the wonders of India's classical arts. Conversations with the biggest names in the culture and music. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Welcome back to watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, External Affairs Minister Shishma Swaraj will uh, represent India at the Russia-India-China trilateral meet starting today. Her visit is being seen as a balancing act after Obama's India visit early last week, laying the ground for Prime Minister Modi's visit, which Swaraj confirmed will happen later this year. Here's more. External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit China in May this year. The PM's trip is a reciprocal one by President Xi Jinping to India in September last year. In a speech to the India-China Media Forum earlier today, Shushma said that India is committed to resolve the boundary issue with the neighbour. She met Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi on Sunday. China too stressed the need to keep good relations with the neighbour. We have made considerable progress in establishing and expanding defense contacts and exchanges, including across our borders. They contribute to the maintenance of peace and tranquility. A prerequisite for the further development of our relationship. On the boundary question, my government is committed to exploring an early settlement. Uh, uh, she also suggested a new six-point template to build ties. Shishma spoke about PM's engagement with the Chinese leadership since taking office, saying the new momentum in ties would be accelerated. A critical change in the nature of our bilateral ties over the last few decades has been its growing economic dimension. China is today our largest partner in trading goods. The two countries and the two economies are moving to invest in each other. Serious discussions on enhancing connectivity have been initiated. Shushma's maiden visit to China also focused on opening the additional route for the Kailash Mansarovar Yatra for which preparations are on. She also highlighted China's cooperation in PM's Make in India initiative. Another major thrust is in establishing industrial parks in two Indian states that would contribute to the Make in India initiative. We will make it easier for Chinese companies to do business in India and expect that similar encouragement would be given to our companies to extend their business in China. Shishma's visit is seen as a crucial one with India seeking to allay Chinese concerns over a joint statement between India and the US during President Barack Obama's visit last week. China had reacted angrily to the India-US statement last week, hinting that they won't make it easy for India to become a member of the nuclear suppliers group. 
Beijing had also criticized both Obama and Modi for statements calling for freedom of navigation and overflight throughout the region, especially in the South China Sea. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, joining me for a chat this morning on uh, what's likely to happen in China today, uh, of course, is uh, Professor Ranudada Chinoy School of International Studies, JNU. Good morning, Professor, and thank you for joining us on the program. You know, Shishma Swaraj is uh, in China on a four-day visit, and uh, there is a very crucial trilateral meet that is going to take place today, that between Russia, India, and China. What can we expect, really, from this meet? Well, look, the Russia-India-China kind of triangle as a process which was initiated over a decade ago, uh, especially with the Russians uh, arguing that in a multipolar world, uh, you need many different regional formations and Russia, India, China should be one of these. And mm. India went along and so did the Chinese. Uh, of course, because of some of the issues between India and China, it hasn't had that kind of coverage as other events. But nonetheless, it's a very important initiative and I think all three countries recognize that. Indeed. And you, you know, Shishma Swaraj's visit to China comes immediately after Barack Obama's visit to India. So is it a sort of a balancing act that India is trying to play out? Well, look, all countries which uh, want to uh, exercise their leverage and not be aligned completely to one group uh, do, do this balancing act. But at the same time, uh, Obama has put forward this theory of pivot where the U.S. would like to be the pivot in Asia, meaning mm -hmm. all other relationships stem from this. Now, India, if they want to maintain their independent foreign policy, they have to be their own pivot. So they have to have different uh, groupings. Uh, Russia uh, has poor relations uh, currently with the U.S. because of Ukraine. Uh, China is uh, seen, uh, they have both competition and conflict with the U.S. Uh, and therefore their relations are growing closer. Uh, India has good relations with, very close relations with Russia and imp very much improving relations with the United States and some cooperation with China and some conflict. Mm. So I think in these circumstances, India should uh, assert and show its independence by having these multiple kind of dialogues, uh, keep the, uh, all kinds of diplomatic channels and other channels open. And for this, this is very important. Russia, India, China have similarity of views on many issues. Mm. Uh, just like uh, now India and US do, but uh, on a lot of issues of development, on economy, they do have, uh, for example, even the BRICS bank, etc. And therefore, this is a very important meeting. You know, as far as China is concerned, China was miffed with India, with what, with what India and Obama discussed as far as the South China Sea is concerned. Now, that is a major problem area as far as China and India is concerned as well, because India too has got quite a few interests there in, as far as the maritime uh, operations are concerned. Uh, totally, because uh, China sees the South uh, uh, Asia uh, seas and the East Asian seas as part of its zone of influence. Mm -hmm. They see themselves as a great power, not just as an emerging power. Uh, but uh, at, at times, the ASEAN countries together have uh, managed to also say that uh, it is the, these, the, the maritime laws or international laws need to be respected and India has partnership with Vietnam etc and that is resented uh, by the Chinese but I think India if it works along especially with the ASEAN countries they can together work out some rules of international law where uh, cooperation rather than conflict between these countries uh, is possible in that India's relation with ASEAN and also negotiations with China telling them that uh, the, the seas are our open resource, uh, th there's a lot that can be done with cooperation as opposed to uh, marking out zones of conflict. That idea of zones of con conflict is an outdated idea in a multipolar world. Indeed. And uh, let's go back to Shishma Suraj's visit now, of course, uh, to China. Does it pay way for uh, Narendra Modi's visit later on in the year to China? And what can we expect really as far as that is concerned? I think it does. And, and you just heard uh, uh, Madam Swaraj say that uh, uh, they're hoping for better, uh, better, not only better relations, but some resolution of the very old, long-standing, uh, you know, territorial uh, disagreements that they have had. Uh, and they've had about 14 uh, kind of joint working groups uh, meetings on this. Uh, and if uh, Prime Minister Modi is able to uh, see a break through this, through this, it will be a major thing. Uh, some give and take, compromise, making the line of actual control into a into a permanent uh, kind of border uh, of strategic interest to both 
and demilitarizing the region so these little skirmishes and cross border issues do not take place all right we'll have to leave to that professor thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning and putting things into perspective for us well, moving on now, of course, uh, to news uh, of uh, another bilateral visit. Newly elected Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena is to visit India later this month. Uh, PTI reports that Sirisena is slated to undertake a two-day official visit to India on February 16th. The dates were agreed upon during consultations between Colombo and New Delhi through diplomatic channels. A reciprocal a visit by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Sri Lanka is also planned from March 13 to 15th. Siri Sena, who dethroned Mahindra Rajapakshe last month, has already indicated that he wants to have closer relations with India. New Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Mangala Samaravira also visited India on his first foreign trip soon after assuming charge last month. Both sides had agreed on a repatriation of refugees during the visit that set the stage for higher level meetings. Some more international news now. Japan reacted with sorrow and outrage on Sunday to a video showing the beheading of Japanese hostage Kenji Goto by the Islamic State militants. More than 100 citizens held silent vigils outside the residence of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to mourn the loss of Kenji Goto, a respected journalist who was known for his commendable work in covering the suffering of civilians in war zones. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said Japan would not give in to terrorism and a vow justice for the slain journalist. The video was released less than a week after the beheading of another Japanese man, Haruna Yukawa. Japanese citizens expressed unhappiness over the government's response and blamed Abe for his active pacifism foreign policy. <laughs> Here are some other news and updates from around the world in our world wrap. A major winter storm swept through parts of the Midwest USA on Sunday, dumping more than 30 centimeters of snow in Chicago area before uh, tracking toward New England region, still reeling uh, from a powerful blizzard that struck only days ago. Up to a foot of snow was uh, forecast in the states of uh, Iowa, Illinois, Michigan and uh, Wisconsin. Multiple winter storm warnings are in place from eastern Nebraska to South Dakota and uh, to the plains as well. These talks aimed at halting rising bloodshed in eastern Ukraine ended in failure with Ukraine's envoy saying pro-Russian separatists wrecked a deal by refusing to discuss an immediate ceasefire. The delayed talks in Minsk were thwarted after top rebel leaders stayed away and their negotiations also refused to discuss withdrawing heavy weapons. As fighting escalates around the town of uh, Debaltsev in U eastern Ukraine on Sunday, a growing wave of civilians are fleeing their homes. Boko Haram insurgents attacked the, on the outskirts of uh, Maiduguri in northeast Nigeria, their second assault in a week on a city they hope to make the capital of a breakaway Islamist state. At least eight people were killed as the militants clashed with soldiers. This comes as African nations opened up a new international front against the Boko Haram. The African Union is to deploy close to 7,500 troops in northeast Nigeria. Thousands of pro-democracy protesters returned to the streets of Hong Kong on Sunday in the first large-scale rally since uh, demonstrations rocked the global financial hub late last year. Some 2,000 police uh, flanked thousands of protesters who marched on the city's glitzy shopping and financial districts, seeking to avoid a repeat of the so-called Occupy Central campaign that saw demonstrations shut down key roads for two and a half months. There were no reports of violence. Well, it's time for another short break here on the program. All the sports updates lined up for you on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Watch the world come alive in your living room. Defining moments.
momentous events. News tonight, your window to the world. Every night at 9 pm. In the Maths Factor, we travel through time and space and see how maths has evolved and how it is a part of the world around us. Join us on Rajya Sabha Television. Watch The Maths Factor every Sunday at 8 am. Back here watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, world number one Novak Djokovic claimed his fifth Australian Open title on Sunday, beating Andy Murray in the final. Meanwhile, Leander Pace clinched his 15th Grand Slam title by winning the Australian Open mixed doubles title. Here's a look at the matches on the final day. The final encounter between Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray was expected to be a tight one. It turned out that way in the beginning as they waged a fierce baseline duel for the opening two sets, both winning one each in the tie break. The top seed then won 12 of the last 13 games to close out an emphatic 7-6-6-7-6-3-6-0 win in more than three and a half hours. Djokovic became the first man in the professional era to secure five titles at Melbourne Park. For Murray, it was the fourth failed attempt to win the trophy. I'm so privileged and honored uh, and grateful to, to be standing here and uh, as a champion here for the fifth time and to be in the in the elite uh, in the elite player uh, and the elite group of players with uh, Sir Roy Emerson, of course uh, Rod Laver and uh, all the legends of our sports. Doubles final of the Australian Open. The underpace and his Swiss partner Martina Hingis were up against the defending champions Daniel Nestor and Kristina Mladenovic in the mixed doubles final. The third seed pair of Nestor and Cristina had defeated the Indo-Brazilian pair of Sanya Mirza and Bruno Suarez in the semi-final. The seventh seed Indo-Swiss pair broke the opponents early to take a 3-0 lead in the first set. At 4-5 down, Nestor double faulted to give up the first set by 6-4 in 29 minutes. Terrible service game from Nestor and that cost him the first set 6 games to 4. In the second set, Pace and Hingis were broken early, but they broke back their opponents twice to go by 5-3 up. In the ninth game, Hingis hit a back paddling smash to seal the straight set 6-4, 6-3 victory in just over an hour. Today it was just a, a matter of patience and eventually uh, our, our understanding of the game of tennis, our understanding of each other came through and uh, it's just a treat to, to win your 16th, no? Her 16th, my 15th. It was like always like every point counts and mm -hmm. there was a huge difference today that it was not as physical maybe but it was more of a mental match today. The victory gave 41-year-old Pace his 7th mixed doubles Grand Slam title and his 15th overall. For Hingis, it was her 11th doubles title apart from a 5 singles title. Six, four, six, three. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's bring you up to date with the other sports actions uh, in our sports beat. Australia clinched uh, the one-day tri-series with an emphatic 112-run victory over England on Sunday as Glenn Maxwell produced a stellar all-round performance. Australia made 278 for 8 batting first and went on to win by 112 runs. Maxwell made the highest score of 95 runs and took 4 wickets and a fine catch. England were all out for just 166 in 39.1 overs. Lionel Messi struck the winner for Barcelona to beat Villarreal 3-2 at home and move a point behind leaders Real Madrid in the La Liga on Sunday. Barca fell behind when Denis Cheryshev diverted a shot home but Neymar leveled from a rebound. Luciano Vieto slotted home to put the visitors ahead with the first of three goals in the space of four minutes. Rafiania uh, equalized uh, from close range before Messi's goal. Real Madrid's lead at the top has been cut to just one point. Former world number one Tiger Woods uh, fired his worst score as a professional and 11 over par 82 to miss the cut at the US PGA Phoenix Open. Woods uh, stood last at 13 over 155 for the tournament, his first four to tour events since last August after recovering from a back injury. Woods a 14-time uh, major champion chasing the record 18 majors won by Jack Nicklaus is assured of missing the cut for only the 13th time in his pro career.
and finally residents of Venice were cloaked, masked and robed in style for the first full day of the Venice Carnival on Sunday. A traditional boat parade is held on the first day through the Lagoon City. I am going to leave you with these visuals. Have a nice day.